the entire set. Uh, we're reviewing all of the new cars from the new set, and we're very excited about it. This is take two. We did this all yesterday, and we lost all of the VODs because they had no audio, thanks to uh, Twitch soundtrack, which uh, sucks. Um, so if you were here yesterday while we were doing this live, thank you so much for being here again. If you're watching this on YouTube later, um, thank you for being here as well. I, I would love to chat magic with you. If you want to leave a comment, tell me what card you're most excited about. Tell me what card I might be undervaluing or not paying enough attention to. Or maybe tell me which card I'm overvaluing and let me know uh, why I'm looking in the wrong direction. Otherwise, thank you again for being here. We would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel or give this video a like. It really helps these things get seen by more people. Um, yeah, that's that's about it. We're going to go through all these cards in red. We've already done white, blue, and black. Uh, we will talk about the new mechanics and set mechanics as we come across them in each folder so that you don't have to go through and watch the set review in order in to get the most out of um the review so if you want to start with this video that's great if you want to start with any of the other videos that's also great we will talk about the mechanics as we hit them so let's jump right in as soon as i take a swig so first up for red we have belligerent of the ball Two and a red for a 3-3 three, three Ogre Warrior with Celebration. Celebration is kind of like Constellation, where it is triggered if you have two or more non-land permanents enter the battlefield under your control this turn. Um, Belligerent of the Balls Celebration has um, target creature you control gets plus one, plus O, oh, and gains menace until end of turn if you trigger Celebration. So from where we're sitting now, having not played with the cards yet, Having not played within limited or constructed, it's difficult to ascertain whether or not celebration is going to be something we can trigger um, effectively or often enough or consistently. So it's still up in the air whether or not celebration is a good mechanic or a strong mechanic. Uh, we will have to see once we start playing with these cards. Otherwise, this is a 3-3 three, three for 3 that could give something menace and plus one plus O. Oh. Uh, so it's not terrible, but it's about a par. Uh, next up, we have Bellowing Bruiser. Uh, this has an adventure, so we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, uh, Bellowing Bruiser is a 4-4 four, four Ogre with Haste, which is not bad for five mana. Adventure is a returning mechanic from the original Eldraine. If you haven't played that set or any of the Dungeons & Dragons set that also included adventures, um, Actually, I believe, did Lord of the Rings have Adventure too? I can't remember. Uh, basically, Adventure is a sorcery or instant that you can cast from your hand. When you do, you exile this card, and then you may cast the full part of the card, the other part of the card, from exile later. Um, you can do it on the same turn if you have the mana to pay for it. Otherwise, most adventures are set up or designed to set up the main card. So this one is up to two target creatures can't block this turn. So you play Beat the Path um, as a sorcery. You exile this card, and then you play Bellowing Bruiser. It has haste. Um, you've taken away your opponent's two best blockers. So hopefully you can get in strong uh, with something thanks to that. So that's what Adventure does. You're going to see it a few times. Um, it's going to play a big role in this set for sure because it's an original Eldraine mechanic, so we're going to see it a bunch. This card is fine. Next up, we have Bespoke Battle Guard, which is the first equipment so far this set. We're three colors down into our fourth color, and we got our first piece of equipment. Uh, not an equipment-heavy set. So battle Bespoke Battle Guard is one and a red for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus O, oh, and it has celebration. So if you manage to have two or more non-land permanents enter the battlefield at the beginning of combat on your turn. Um, you get to attach bespoke battle garb up to two, up to one cre target creature you control. So you basically get, bleh, you basically get a free attach 
cost, equip cost, if you can trigger celebration. So that's interesting. Um, it's it's an okay card. It's fine. Um, next up, we have Boundary Lands Ranger. One and a red for a 2-2 two -two human ranger. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. Uh, this is a fine card. It's, it gives you some utility. It's it's a 2-2 two -two for 2, which isn't bad. It has a bow in it, so in the image, so I'm surprised it doesn't have reach, but I'm not mad that it doesn't either. Uh, next up is Charming Scoundrel. This one's interesting. 1 and a red for a 1-1 one, one human rogue with haste, so that's pretty decent when it enters the battlefield you may choose one discard a card and draw a card which is decent create a treasure token also decent or create a wicked roll token attached to target creature you control so the wicked roll is part of a new mechanic called rolls they are token enchantments that are auras there are six of them total Five of them do positive things and one of them does a negative thing the wicked roll in particular says Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one. When this aura is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses a life. Uh, so it's a pretty powerful uh, little token. And it's most of the time it's given to you as an additional thing. It's not the main thing. So all of these tokens or all of these token enchantments being kind of low power is kind of by design because they are mostly free they're mostly just an additional thing you get to unlock uh next up is cut in three and a red for a sorcery cut in deals four damage to target creature create a young hero roll token attached to up to one target creature you control here's another example of a roll um the he the young hero roll is on a token en enchantment Enchanted creature has whenever this creature attacks, if its toughness is three or less, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. So the young hero roll is neat because it gives you that, um, gives that creature the ability to grow if it's small. Uh, next up is Edgewall Pack, which is our first and I believe only dog in the whole set. Uh, Edgewall Pack is three and a red for a 3-3 three, three dog with menace. When Edgewall Pack enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token with, that can't block um the black and red archetype is rat based so that's why this dog card has something to do with rats if you were wondering and the art is really cute there's a rat like controlling and pointing this dog in the right direction uh it's pretty cool next up we have embrith veteran obviously castle embrith is the red castle in eldraine embrith veteran says is one red for a 2-1 human knight, which is pretty good value right out the gate. You can pay one, sacrifice Embrith veteran, create a young hero roll tack token, attach it to another target creature. Um, again, the young hero roll says whenever this creature attacks, if its toughness is three or less, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Um, Embrith veteran also has one toughness. So if you happen to have two of these and you sacrifice one of them, to put the young hero roll on the other uh you will get the you will get two counters over the course of two attacks so it's not bad uh flick a coin is next two and a red for an instant flick a coin deals one damage to any target create a treasure token and to draw a card so this is kind of like a three for one um you get to potentially take out a one one or something with one toughness uh, you get to create a treasure token and you get to draw a card. So it kind of equals out to the mana value of two and a red. You get three things for three mana. It's not too bad. It's not great, but it's not too bad. Especially if you need to cast instants, this is kind of makes up for it. Next up is food fight. One and a red for an enchantment. Artifacts you control have pay to sacrifice this artifact. It deals damage to any target equal to one plus the number of permanents named food fight you control uh so obviously you want multiple copies of food fight and you can deal multiple damage to other things it's it's not great it's hard it's definitely not good and limited you're probably only going to have one copy of this uh it's not 
great and constructed either because you really need like three or four copies of it to make it do anything significant so it's kind of kind of bad frantic firebolt is next two and a red for an instant frantic blah, 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 blah. tongue twister card names i love it frantic firebolt deals x damage to target creature where x is two plus the number of cards in your graveyards that are instants or sorceries or have an adventure so this is kind of like that gandalf um card from lord of the rings where it cares how many instant sorcery cards you have in your graveyard but has the added benefit of also including adventure cards it's also the same cost as that gandalf one so i'd be interested to see if this maybe straight up replaces it plus it deals two damage at, at base so if you don't have any in the graveyard and you just need to deal that two damage this will do it on its own which is not bad Next up, we have Gnawing Crescendo. It's two and a red for an instant. Creatures you control get plus two, plus O oh until end of turn. Whenever a to non-token creature you control dies this turn, create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token that can't block. Uh, not bad. It's not good, but it's not terrible. Godric the Cloaked Reveler. One red red for a 3-3 three, three human noble legendary creature with haste and celebration. As long as two or more non-land permanents entered the battlefield under your control this turn, Godric Cloaked Reveler is a dragon with base power and toughness 4-4, four, four, flying, and uh, fire breathing. So this is a cool card, uh, but again, we don't know how reliably you're going to be able to trigger celebrations, so take that with a grain of salt. It's neat. Uh, next up, we have Grabby Giant. Three and a red for a 4-3 giant with reach. Two and a red, sacrifice an artifact or land, draw a card. Not great. The nice thing is, is that uh, it also makes an artifact that you can sacrifice later. The adventure attached to it is called That's Mine. For one and a red, it's an instant create a treasure token. Uh, not bad. Have we talked about, we have talked about adventures in red so far, so that's pretty good. It's not terrible. Grand Ball Guest is next. One and a red for a 2-2 Human Peasant with Celebration. Grand Ball Guest gets plus one, plus one, and has Trample as long as two or more non-land permanents entered the battlefield under your control this turn. Uh, not too bad. Not great, but not too bad. Harried Spear Guard is next. One red for a 1-1 one, one Human Soldier with Haste. When Harried Spear Guard dies, you create a 1-1 one, one Black Rat creature token that can't block. Um, again, black and red is the rat archetype. So a lot of these cards have, a lot of these red cards have to do with black rats. Uh, the next up is Hearth Elemental. Five and a red for a four five elemental. This spell costs X less to cast where X is the number of cards in your graveyard that are instant sorceries or adventures. Uh, that's pretty good. It's just an angry fireplace. And then it has Stoke Genius. It's an adventure for one and a red. It's a sorcery. Discard your hand, draw two cards. Uh, that's pretty good. Because you can discard instant sorceries or adventures in order to make this cheaper to cast. It's a four, five for six. So you really want to get it down to like three or four mana to make it really worth uh, your while. But it's interesting. This next one I'm really intrigued by. Immondane the Pyro Hammer is two red red for a 4-4 four, four human knight legendary creature. Whenever an instant or sorcery spell you control that targets only a single creature deals damage to that creature, Immondane deals that much damage to each opponent. So this is like a pinger spread the wealth around um, kind of card. It's very interesting. I think this is going to go in some really fun... Uh, spell slinger commander decks otherwise i don't know how much it's going to play in constructed um it might be a bomb in limited it might not so definitely give it a try but i can't say for certain it's going to be bombastic in limited uh from where i stand because we don't really know how often we're going to be casting these direct damage spells
Uh, next up, we have Kindled Heroism. One red for an instant target creature gets plus one, plus oh, and gains first strike until end of turn. Scry one. It's just kind of like a standard boring combat trick um, with the added benefit of scrying one. Corvold and the Noble Thief. Uh, so obviously sagas are back. It's a longstanding um, enchantment tradition. And I think we're going to be seeing sagas in pretty much every set going forward. Obviously Eldraine being a storybook world, having sagas just fits the theme as well. So Corvold and the Noble Thief is three and a red for an enchantment saga. Chapter one, create a treasure. Chapter two, create a treasure. And then chapter three, exile the top three cards of your opponent's library. You may play those cards this turn. Um, so the first two chapters kind of help you cast whatever you exile from your opponent's library because you're assuming that you might pull something that has... Um, colored mana in its casting cost and this does not give you the opportunity to cast things using mana of any color so you need those treasure tokens to potentially cast the cards on the top of your opponent's library that you snag um it's pretty fun it's decent i like the art on it it's got that old english fairy tale vibe to it next up is mary bards another iris art very very beautiful art by iris here their art is just so iconic in magic and iconic in general that it's very easy to spot uh, on a magic card. So Mary Bards is two and a red for a 3-2 human bard. With It says, when Mary Bards enters the battlefield, you may pay one. When you do, create a young hero roll token attached to target creature you control. Um, again, the young hero roll says, whenever this creature attacks... If its toughness is three or less, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Um, so you can attach it to Mary Bards and get uh, a 1-1 one, one counter on it when you attack with it. But uh, you might want to put that roll on a different creature, something a little bit smaller maybe. Um, it's decent. It's not great, but it's fine. Uh, Minecart Daredevil is next. This is that Edgar Hidalgo art that's also very iconic. Lots of iconic uh, magic artist coming back for for Eldraine. I love it. Uh, Minecart Daredevil is two and a red for a 4-2 Dwarf Knight with uh, flavor text. It has an adventure attached to it called Ride the Rails. One and a red for an instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus one until end of turn. Um, this is fine. It's kind of boring, but it's fine. A 4-2 for three is exactly par, so I don't hate it. Monstrous Rage is next. For one red, you get an instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus O oh until end of turn. Create a monster roll token attached to it. Um, the monster roll says enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has trample. So not only do you get the plus two, plus O, oh, but you also get the plus one, plus one, and trample. So it's pretty good. Raging Battle Mouse is next. This one's really cute. One and a red for a 2-1 mouse. The second spell you cast each turn costs one less to cast. And then it also has celebration, which again, we don't know how often we're going to be able to trigger. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if two or more non-land permanents enter the battlefield under your control this turn, target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So it's interesting, but... Uh, rat catcher Trainee. One and a red for a 2-1 human peasant. As in, my voice just cracked. Wow. Um, as long as it's your turn, Rat Catcher Trainee has first strike. That's not bad. And then it has an adventure on it. Pest problem. Two and a red for an instant. Create two one one black rat creature tokens that can't block. Uh, pretty interesting. Next up, we have the big bad dragon, which we have to have in red, obviously. Realm Scorcher Hellkite is four red red for a four six dragon with bargain. Um, I don't know if we've talked about bargain yet, but bargain is basically an additional casting cost that you can pay in order to get a secondary or amplified version of the card. So Realm Scorcher Hellkite has flying in haste and whenever it enters the battlefield, if it was bargained, add four mana in any combination of colors, then you can pay one and a red to give or 
one on a red for Realm Scorcher Hellkite to deal one damage to any target. So basically, in order to bargain it, you have to sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token. But if you bargain the Realm Scorcher Hellkite, then you get four mana to deal. You can activate its ability twice right away and deal two damage to any target, which is pretty decent. Um, it also has haste, so you can attack with it right away. Uh, this is a this is a bomb, 100% a bomb, but it's like obviously a bomb, so I don't feel good about talking about it. Uh, Red Cap Cutter, Gutter Dweller is next. This one's my most intriguing card. Two red red for a 3-3 Goblin Warrior with Menace. Whenever Red Cap Gutter Dweller enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 Black Rats that can't block. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice another creature if you do put a 1-1 counter on red cap gutter dweller and exile the top card of your library you may play that card this turn so you get two free rats which you can then sacrifice to make red cap gutter dweller bigger and get access to the top card of your library so it's it's a really neat like two for one kind of card i like it and we've got Red Cap Thief, which is two and a red for a 2-3 Goblin Rogue. It says, when Red Cap Thief enters the battlefield, create a treasure token. Uh, not bad. For some reason, a lot of the commons and uncommons are undervalued in terms of power and toughness uh, versus their mana cost. So this mana cost is three, but you're only getting a 2-3 instead of a 3-3 three, three, or a 4-2 or a 2-4 or whatever. Um, and I think that that's by design. I think that they're trying to to soften the blow of a lot of the commons and uncommons and make the rares and mythics more exciting. But they wanted to um, obviously have some value to keep red cap thieves into in your deck. So getting a free treasure token out of it, uh, it is worth it. That kind of brings the value back up to normal. Instead of uh, creating a creature card that, you know, maybe has an even value trade-off on paper, but doesn't actually do anything, doesn't change the board or give you access to anything else. Um, they soften the mana value in terms of power and toughness, but they give you that extra um, ability and, and stuff to make up for the softened power and toughness. Which I think is the way to go. I'd rather have cards that do things than this. Just If this was just a 3-3 three, three with flavor text on it, um, I would be less excited about that than a 2-3 with a treasure. Um, so I think that that's kind of my jam. Especially in a set where there's lots of bargaining going on. So um, you can sacrifice a treasure in order to pay a bargaining cost, uh, which makes this even better. Next up, we have Rotisserie Elemental, this creepy little fire chef guy. One red for a 1-1 Elemental with Menace. Whenever Rotisserie Elemental deals combat damage to a player, put a skewer counter on it. Then you may sacrifice it if you do exile the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of skewer counters on it. You may play those cards this turn. Um, basically, this is just one of those cards where you get it out early, you start accruing some value, and then you sacrifice it to um, get the big payout in a few turns, like turn three, turn four. You sacrifice it. Um, you get to look at the top couple cards of your library and play, have access to those. I think that the, the value payoff is eventually there, and I like it. Next up, we have Skewer Slinger. So yesterday I was taken aback by this card because Skewer Slinger is a one and a red for a one three dwarf knight with reach. So for some reason they gave a dwarf reach um, and all they're doing is holding food skewers. So it doesn't make any sense that they have reach. They're a dwarf. Um, whenever Skewer Slinger blocks or becomes blocked by a creature, it deals one damage to that creature. Um, it's kind of on par with a lot of recent card designs so i don't hate it but it's also not good song of tottentans uh, so tottentans is the pied piper and this is his song it's x and a red for a sorcery you create x one one black rat creatures that can't block 
And then creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. So if you play this for five mana, you get four rats that can attack right away. If you play this for um, just one red mana, all of your creatures get haste until end of turn. It's it's a pretty versatile card. I like it. Stone Splitter Bolt is next. X and a red for an instant with bargain. Stone Splitter Bolt deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker. If this spell was bargained, it deals twice X damage to that permanent instead. So this is one of those situations where X can't be zero. Uh, well, it can be legally, but it shouldn't be zero because it then it'll do nothing. Um, so if you pay four mana for this and then bargain it, you can deal eight damage to something. Uh, this is one of those cards that people are going to undervalue and then be caught off guard by if they have 10 life left um, and they're on like turn six or seven there there's a good chance that you could just be stone splitter bolted to death and i think that that is very intriguing it makes this card one of my most anticipated for this set i can't wait to see how people play it with it don't get caught off guard by stone splitter bolt Tattered Ratter is next. One in a red for a 2-2 two -two human peasant. Whenever a rat you control becomes blocked, it gets plus 2, plus 0 oh until end of turn. Again, the black-red rat archetype is very strong with this card because your 1-1 one -one rats become 3-1 rats and can actually take out some of your, player, your opponent's important stuff with just these little rat tokens. So definitely consider putting Tattered Ratter in your rat deck. Torch the Tower is next. For one red mana, it's an instant with bargain. Torch the Tower deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker. If this spell was bargained, it instead deals three damage to that permanent and scry one. If a permanent dealt damage by this card would die, exile it instead. Um, so this is kind of on the lower end. It's on the higher end of bad bargains. I think that Stone Splitter Bolt is on the good end of bargaining because you get to double your damage. It makes actually bargaining it worthwhile, whereas this is on the higher end of absolutely don't do it. You might want to do it, though. If you really need to deal three damage instead of two, then bargain. Otherwise, this is just one red mana, deal two, kill something, hopefully. Even if you're just doing the last two damage to something, if you do this post-combat, um, being able to exile something by killing it with Torch the Tower uh, can be really important. There's a lot of cards in Modern and um, Pioneer that uh, do this kind of exact thing, and they're played universally because getting rid of something from the game is very important sometimes twisted fealty is next two and a red for a sorcery gain control of target creature until end of turn untap that creature it gains haste create a wicked roll token and attach it to one target creature so you don't have to put the wicked roll on um the creature you gain control of um but again the wicked roll says Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and when this aura is put into a graveyard, each opponent loses a life. Um, yeah, it's just one of those red cards where you take control of your opponent's thing. It's uh, not surprising that they have that kind of mechanic in Eldraine because Wicked Witches and all that. But uh, this will be a, a hot limited card, but it, it won't see much play in Constructed. Next up is Two-Headed Hunter, four and a red for a 5-4 giant with Menace. It has an adventure called Twice the Rage. For one and a red, it's an instant target creature gains double strike until end of turn. Um, it's it's cute, but it's, it's ultimately um, an okay card. Next up is Unruly Catapult. This is two and a red for an 0-4 construct artifact creature with Defender. This is that um, tap pinger. I can never remember the card's name, but it's like a flame spitter or something. Um, it's very popular in the blue red spells deck. This is a defender, so it can't attack, but then you can tap it to deal one damage to each opponent. And then whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you can untap unruly catapult. Um, unfortunately, this only targets opponents and not creatures. So you can't actually help clear the board with this, but 
you can potentially untap and tap this multiple times per turn. And then it's also an artifact creature, so you can technically sacrifice this to pay a bargaining cost if you need to. Uh, virtue of Courage is the red virtue, so there's a whole cycle of virtues. Each color gets one, um, and we're going to do a tier list video a little bit later in the week talking about all the virtues and ranking them. Um, virtue of Courage is the red virtue. It is three red red for an enchantment. Whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to an opponent, you may exile that many cards from the top of your library, and you may play those cards this turn. Um, getting access to the top of your library is always good. This is very strong in comparison to the other three virtues we've looked at already. It's probably the weakest, um, but I think that there's a lot of ways that people can take advantage of this. And, and uh, unfortunately, you can't play those cards for free. You just get access to them. So this is not something that you would necessarily be able to take make use of right away but on the following turns you can definitely make use of that uh, it basically just speeds up the end of the game whether you win or lose it just makes things go faster it also has an adventure called embrith blaze so all of these virtues are themed after the colored castles from the original eldraine set uh, castle embrith was obviously the red castle in thrones throne of eldraine uh, Emberth Blaze is one and a red for an instant. Emberth Blaze deals two damage to any target. Um, again, you need non-combat damage to trigger the main enchantment, the Virtue of Courage. So it's nice that Emberth Blaze does non-combat damage. But in order to cast the Virtue of Courage, you have to forsake the adventure. Or you've already cast the adventure, so it doesn't really line up. Um, it's good. All of the virtues are good. Um, very strong. Overpowered. Going to be bombs. If you manage to open these in limited, hopefully you can get there. Because they are all expensive, but they're all game changers. Uh, next up is Witch's Mark. One in a red for a sorcery. You may discard a card. If you do, draw a card and then create a wicked roll. And attach it to a creature you control. Um, this is fine. It's like Faithless Looting plus a little bit of extra. And then lastly for red is Witch Stalker Frenzy. Three and a red for an instant. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature that attacks this turn. Witch Stalker Frenzy deals five damage to target creature. Um, you can easily, especially in the Rats deck, easily cast this for one red mana deal five damage pretty strong um it also triggers the virtue of courage because it's non-combat damage so it's a pretty good card uh and that's it for red i think stone splitter bolt is probably my pick for sleeper i think realm scorcher is obviously a very good card um Yeah, I think I like the dogs. I like the dogs. That's that's it. I think I would just say that, you know, Stone Splitter Bolt, do not forget this card exists. This will catch you off guard, especially in limited. Um, this is my pick for Sleeper. It's very, very cool. Uh, we're going to take a quick bio break, stand up, stretch our legs. We're going to come back and then go through green. If you're watching this on YouTube later, thank you so much for being here. Uh, say hello in the comments. Let me know which red card you're most excited to get and play. Uh, which one are you going to pack one? Pick one for sure. Don't include any of the obvious ones. Pick something smart. Use your non-smooth brain. Um, say hello uh, if you want to. Instead, if if you could and you do like the video hit the thumbs up button it really helps us out also subscribing to the channel really helps the more subscribers we get the more access to tools on youtube that we have uh so that means the world to us um and yeah thank you so much for being here 